Hello there everyone, it's the Mean Bean Machine here for GetBean.com and today we are reviewing Union Coffee's Yayu Forest. Um, I won't say blend because I believe it's um, a single origin coffee. Um, now this particular coffee is from the Yayu Reserve, so it's Ethiopian wild coffee from the Yayu Forest, supposedly. Um, now, I am a big fan of Union, but I must admit uh, a bias here because I was actually trained by Union um, as a barista. I was trained in their East London headquarters. Um, now, this was a few years ago. This was uh, before they went mainstream and started selling to supermarkets. So this is when they were selling to just coffee shops at the time. Um, our particular coffee shop that I was working in was using Union Beans. And so I was trained um, using their beans and their machinery. Um, so I will try and maintain kind of a level of neutrality here, but I'm just letting you know <laughs> there is probably a slight bias there. Now, as I said, Union have now kind of moved into the supermarket arena and uh, you can start getting their beans in uh, Waitrose now, uh, possibly other places as well, but uh, Waitrose uh, is where they tend to sell their beans outside of coffee shops. Um, a lot of coffee shops in London still do sell Union, um, but less than, I see them around less. I don't know if it is less than they used to be, but I see them around less. I don't know if they're now moving towards more of a home market. But, um, so I got this particular bag, uh, which was five pounds actually for 200 grams. So considering it's the supermarket, you know, market, that's, not cheap. I mean, usually you're looking at six, seven pound a bag for that sort of bag anyway from, say, a coffee shop or an independent kind of uh, market. Um, so you're still cheaper because you're going via the supermarket, I suppose. But, you know, it is Waitrose. Um, so, yeah, uh, not not cheap, but still not bad. Now, uh, this um, not blend, this bag claims to have notes of citrus and bourbon biscuits, um, which is a very strange and specific uh, tasting note. I've covered kind of what I've said about citrusy notes before, um, so it should have that kind of acidic tongue to it, but it claims to be quite medium. One thing I do like about what they've now started doing for uh, the supermarket you know, uh, consumer is that they actually rate their roast and the strength of it, if you can see there at the bottom, um, which is a nice little touch. It, it's it's a way of kind of introducing uh, less averse kind of consumers into that sort of coffee culture. It's a nice kind of easy way in. It's a proper, it's a proper coffee, if you see what I mean, um, but for less concerned consumers. So, I like that. Um, so this claims to be a medium blend um, and a medium strength at three. I believe it goes, they do their strengths up to five, I believe. Um, I might possibly go stronger. But um, yeah. Um, and you know, an added thing about this is 25p goes towards their projects in helping uh, this particular Ethiopian forest. Um, so yeah, now I'm gonna try this blend, or well, not blend, sorry, this origin, <laughs> um, as uh, espresso and then with uh, a dairy alternative to milk. So we'll give it a go. If I can get my machine to work. It will be uh, good fun. Uh, make sure it's topped up. So, so here we go. We'll try as an espresso, then as a, I suppose, a sort of latte thing. Now, 
as I've said before, they moved into the supermarket kind of arena. And at the time, um, a lot of people had concerns. I know the coffee shop I was working at were a little, um, had a few concerns over how this affected their business and uh, the service they provided to kind of coffee shop providers at the time. Um, you know, I was trained specific for a specific blend, or I wasn't trained for a specific blend, but we bought a specific blend that was, you know, that we'd set our machines to for a specific temperature to maximise this blend. And then they changed their house blend without particularly letting us know. So, I mean, there were concerns when they moved over to the coffee, you know, the, the mainstream market as they were, you know. Um, it's a bit like when your favourite punk band releases you know, a pop album. They, they went a bit mainstream and, you know, sure, they're making more money for the mass market, but it's not really what it used to be. So they, they have had um, concerns there. Really, they've probably addressed that now. I'm not really in the um, coffee shop trade enough now to say if they've addressed that, but that's, that's where they were at a few years ago. So that's come out nicely. Let's give that a look. Now, the Kremers... Not as thick as I'm kind of used to from some other independent blends, but it still looks nice and good, so we'll give it a go. It smells a lot milder than a lot of other blends I've had recently. I know this isn't a blend, I know I keep saying blend. Now, that says it's medium. I would personally call that mild. Now, at this stage, my taste buds... Um, probably do tend towards a stronger coffee <laughs> um, but I would say that's quite mild it's actually quite nice as an espresso because it's quite mild but that's not not that's not really want what you want from an espresso you want a nice strong punch in the face wake up from an espresso personally um, but if you are uh, perhaps not so au fait with kind of coffee drinking or really strong coffee tastes um, that will probably be a nice kind of starter. Now I'm going to put my uh, oat milk into this and try it as a sort of latte, you know, that pour is or abysmal and I've not frothed it properly. But, you know, to get the, the gist of it, you know, so I'm going to try it as a sort of a milky alternative. Now it's nice, I really like that, but you don't get a lot of the coffee taste. I would like something stronger for what I'm drinking it as here. But as I said, as an espresso, possibly even black, that's quite nice. Again, it says medium, but I'd say it is more toward mild. Um, for a five for a bag, it's not bad. And like I say, it's, it's quite easy to pick up if you're near a Waitrose. Um, I've not managed to kind of break into uh, lower end supermarkets. Waitrose is still actually quite expensive for a lot of people. Um, but there's a few supermarket um, traders now. There's a few brands in the supermarkets that aren't bad going, that, that can hold their own against... Uh, you know the beans you'll pick up in a coffee shop or on on the market i think union is one of them but you are erring on the kind of safe side um so i really i like this coffee and i could drink that all day to be honest in that kind of setup because i'm not getting a lot from it but it's nice it's it's quite soothing i don't get a lot of that citrusy note that I was saying, it's definitely there. Um, but, yeah, you know, I would have expected something, you know, to prick the tongue a bit more with those sort of tasting notes. I really don't understand the, the bourbon biscuit reference. Um, I don't get that at all. Possibly a reference it to being kind of it being a bit sweeter, but it, it, it doesn't want to kind of hint at chocolatey because that would suggest a far richer tone than what it's giving off. Um, but yeah, bourbon biscuit, weird, weird one. Anyway, so 
kind of, it's a nice mild coffee. I think anyone, you know, coffee drinker or not, would be quite happy to have that as a milky or, you know, in my case, a oat milky, you know, set up for a fiver a bag. I think, I think that's a safe bet. Um, so yeah, I like it. Um, as an espresso, which is really what I remain, recommend that one for. Um, but yeah, good going, quite nice. Not as strong as I'd hoped. Not, you know, no kind of real visceral taste to it. But I think plenty of people would enjoy that one.